Mike, can you hear us? I got you, Stephen, yes. We are now joined by Hofstra acting head coach Mike Fairley following his team's 76-71 victory over Richmond. Mike, if you could just uh, possibly stop shaking the camera a little bit. and uh, Yeah, no, I'm, you know, I'm sorry, Stephen. They were doing their radio show outside. So okay. It was really loud. Uh, if you could uh, give us an opening statement about today's 76-71 win over Richmond. Yes. Um, so, sorry, I'm just finding a spot here. Um, just want to – just want to start off by saying um, we send our condolences out to the Bethea family. Um, Zion Bethea, our freshman, who unfortunately hasn't played yet because of hand surgery. Um, his father passed away a couple nights ago, suddenly, night before the Bonaventure game. Um, um, so, you know, can't imagine, hard to imagine what he's going through. Um, but Mr. Bethea was a great, great man. Um, and certainly want to send our best to Zion, to his entire family um, with what they're going through. I certainly wish he could have been here today uh, to experience this. But, um, you know, so, so that, that's first and foremost. Um, our thoughts have been with him a lot the last couple of days. Uh, so rest in peace to Mr. Bethea, just a great, great man and father. Um, a tremendous win today. We played 40 minutes. You know, and I've been preaching it the last couple of days, and I said the same thing after Bonaventure, is for us to be good and for us to win games, we have to play a full 40 minutes. You know, Bonaventure, we didn't play the first 10. We were down 30 to 7. We played a really good, I mean, maybe a great, whatever it was, 25, and then not a great last five. We didn't close it out. Um, but today we played a full 40. That's been where we've been preaching it. We finally – Finally got it. And I said to the guys after the game, I said, you know, look what happens when we do play that full 40, what we can accomplish, how good we can be beating a nationally ranked team on the road. Um, so, you know, I'm, I'm glad we got that and played every possession. They made their run the second half. They came out with more energy than us in the, uh, to start the second half. But we matched it. We came back, made shots. You know, it just seemed like Tariq and, and obviously Jalen, whenever, whenever we needed it. They, uh, they came up big, and, uh, you know, Isaac Conte, best big guy on the court, and contributions from everybody. Got stops when we needed to, a lot of firepower, a lot of skill on that other side, and uh, did what we needed to do defensively. I think they were seven for 24 from three, um, so did a great job on that end and, uh, and controlled backwards for the most of the game. Uh, Mike, before we go to questions, could you just comment on uh, Jalen Ray and his uh, scoring his 1,000th point, and obviously in this game? Yep. Uh, home state of Virginia, not too too far. Wish his mom could have been here to, to see that. Um, but, you know, he's on a, he's on a magical ride this year. Um, been unbelievable for us, leading it whenever we need a bucket. He's the one coming up with it. Um, he's, he's just been great, you know. Um, a little bit funny, you know, his high school teammate committed to Richmond out of high school, signed with Richmond. He ended up playing elsewhere. But, uh, you know, I think it was a little bit special for him to come back here today, home state, and uh, – and show him what 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 he is and what what he what he could could be. Um, so, great moment for him. Tremendous career. Think about he scored a thousand points already with however many games we have left. Hopefully, it's a lot. Um, when you played with Justin with twenty three hundred points, Elijah nineteen hundred points, and Dejour Bowie and what he did last year to still score a thousand on all the winning teams. He's one of the most the winningest players in Hofstra history too. So, unbelievable career, and uh, he's just playing. He's in a really good place right now. We'll go to our first question. It'll be John from Newsday. John, go ahead. Mike, John from Newsday, congratulations on a great win. Thank uh, you. A couple of, you know, you close up the game, I think, making 10 of your last 11 shots on the floor. And as much as, you know, Jalen and, and, and Coburn were such big parts of it, I thought Kramer and uh, Conte were big. Can you just talk about, like, getting – you know, playing the full 40 minutes, but then also getting contributions from other guys besides your well, big – Yeah, look, I mean, Isaac's as good of a big guy as there is in our conference – you know, this kid Golden's really good, and uh, Isaac's just as good as him. He's, he's terrific. Um, you know, I had a purpose of, of getting the ball into him today, and he showed it early on, you know, scoring to him and kept going to him. And then what I was really proud about Isaac was not the scoring necessarily. I thought he worked really hard to get a position. Um, I think that's one thing that he needs to do, get better at, and if he does it the way that he did today, he was great. And then at the end of the game, they started doubling him. They said, oh, you know what, we need to bring some help because this dude's so good. They never double the post. So then bring that help. And then Kayvon made a couple of key cuts uh, 
Coach Speedy had a great, uh, you know, uh, adjustment. And one of the timeouts late, he said, hey, when they double, let's dive Kayvon to the basket. And it was actually a different angle than, uh, than we drew up in the huddle. But Kayvon still recognized it, dove along the baseline, got it. Should have been an M1, but obviously a ferocious, uh, ferocious finish for him. But, no, those two guys are, are great. Play- and, look, we got great contributions from David Green. I know Kevin didn't score, but his minutes were great. He's, such a, he's the best defensive big guy in the league, probably. If Ukashin comes in at the end of the game, cool, calm, and collected. So we got the contributions from everyone. Uh, we'll go to our next question to the uh, new sports director of WRHU Sports, Andrew. Congratulations, Andrew. Thank you, Stephen. Coach, you know, last game against St. Bonaventure, shooting 39% from the field. This game, you guys come out and shoot 60% from the field. What changed out there offensively for you guys? Ball went in a little bit more. Uh, <laughs> first, congrats, Andrew. Um, I saw Thank that you. as well this morning. So congrats on your uh, promotion there. I know you'll do a great job. Um, you know, I think we just got and took great shots. I thought against Bonaventure, we turned down some shots that weren't necessarily great. And, and look, you know, the other part about it, it's a different team. You know, Bonaventure's got their big guy who po- poses some different uh, problems for you uh, for when you're running your offense. You have, you know, a rim protector and a big guy that's so versatile in guarding it. You know, we came in knowing – that you'd get shots. We thought we'd get the shots that we wanted to. We had a really good offensive game plan. Andrew Kobe did a great job with the scout. Colin Curtin and Speedy always do a great job with the offense, uh, you know, re- making recommendations and, and coming in with our, our play card that you might see me referencing during the game. Um, but no, you know, so we took good shots, but we knew we could. You know what, Andrew? It was a little bit more of we knew we needed to guard today because of how much firepower they have, five double figure scores, et cetera. Um, so we thought we'd be able to execute and, and get some good things. Our next question will be from uh, Jermaine uh, from WRHU as we get dizzy for Mike. Thank you. Hello, Coach. How are you doing? Uh, congrats on the win. How important is a win like this against a Richmond team going into conference play? It's huge, you know, and, and, and certainly, you, look, and Coach would always say it. I've been thinking about this a lot the last couple of days, but you play a non-conference to get ready for your conference. And especially, you know, we played such a challenging schedule. I think it's probably the hardest schedule that we played since we've been here. You know, two top 25 teams. Um, obviously, Bonaventure is really good. Iona and Monmouth, two of the better teams in the MAC. Even FDU picked to win their conference. So we played a really challenging schedule to help get us ready for conference play. That's what you want. You want to be battle tested and ready to go. So to cap it off with this victory today was uh, was awesome. And you know, just we've been preaching about building and growing and getting better. And I think we have been doing that and we were rewarded today with that. Um, but, you know, I said to him in there, look, if we beat Richmond and come out flat and don't have a good opening weekend against William and Mary, this doesn't mean anything, you know, now it, when we turn the page from non-conference into conference play, now it's, you know, now we're really ready to go. Now you're playing for a championship. There's no championship for non-conference. This was kind of the crown jewel. And obviously we were able to, to get that win. But now we start playing for a championship. So we have to be locked in. And I said, you guys kind of messed up because you showed when we play all 40 minutes, we can be really good like we were today. Um, so we have to bring it that way every game, no matter the opponent. We know we're going to get everybody's best shot, you know, preseason number one, all that sort of stuff. None of that stuff matters anymore. Uh, none of that really matters to, to begin with. you got to come out every day, uh, every game, especially on these back-to-backs with the right mindset and being able to play 40 minutes. Thank you, Coach. Our next, our next question will be uh, Jerry Beach. Hey, Mike, I got a couple questions for you. Uh, one, early second half, you know, like you said, Richmond came out a little, little faster maybe, had a few second chance baskets. They had a shot at a third chance basket, and David Green wrestled the ball away and drew a foul. Does that, do you remember that play? Does that, did that feel so like if maybe if you can hang on, that, that say, or if you can come back, I think you're down at that point. Does that, that feel like a pivotal turning point for you? I have a follow-up. Uh, yeah, you know what, Jerry? I don't know if it necessarily felt like a, a turning point. Um, I just started feeling really good when Jalen Ray started making a whole bunch of shots. Um, I was calling for him to get a ball screen at one point, and he just fired. Uh, he had a little bit of space uh, and drilled it. And so at that point, I said, ooh, okay. The one point that I was worried, the kid Gustafson, number 22, made a three in front of their bench. He's not really a great shooter. You know, he's a lot more of a driver. Good player, but not a great shooter. So when he made the three, it was one of those moments, Jerry, where you say, like, oh, I don't know if this is our day, man. If this kid's making shots. You know, it was like when Borsico made that shot with, like, five minutes to go in the championship game. You said, I don't know, man, if he's making that shot. That was kind of how it felt during that moment. Um, so I don't know if there was necessarily a turning point necessarily, but I'm certainly very proud of David Green. I don't think he's making that toughness play two months ago. And, I, and he's making them now. He's playing so much harder. He's learning what college basketball is like and the expectations of it. So certainly proud for his growth from that perspective. Can you, I know it's only been a few minutes, but can you compare this win with the UCLA, UCLA win? 
And is this one uh, even bigger given that you just went up to upstate New York four days ago, three days ago, drove home, spent a night at home, drove, took a bus down here. Look, you know what's going on with the travel stuff. Yeah. Um, and to win, at the, to win at the end of that stretch, and UCLA, I think, was the start of that stretch out at Westview. Can you compare the two wins? And is this one arguably bigger, even though UCLA is UCLA? And they have one more yeah, it, it, it's a great question, right? I mean, to, to win at Pauley Pavilion, amazing. But, you know, you guys would know it. I know you guys probably broke down the numbers. We haven't beaten a ranked team since we've been here, uh, you know, for the eight, eight years that we've been uh, with Coach here. So it was uh, certainly very big from that perspective, you know. Um, bigger, you know, I don't know. They were both great, you know. Last year, I think we were a little bit more proven, maybe, and you knew with DeJour and Elijah that we'd be ready to go in a game like that. Today, it was a lot of guys that haven't been in that role, haven't been in that spot before. Um, so, yeah, bigger win, possibly. Yeah, hard to top winning at Pauley. That's, that's pretty special. Um, but being a nationally ranked team with the way that we're traveling, with what we've overcome, with everything this semester, um, you know, arguably as big as a win as, as we've had. And uh, follow up on that because you know you, your fourth game at the your fourth game here was against Richmond uh, down yeah. there. Zeke had a great game. You led yeah. the whole way, lost in overtime. Eight years later, seven years later, you finish it off. And yep. obviously, seven years ago, you were from the bottom. Can you does this win sort of summarize how far you guys have come and what you yeah. build up with them? And believe me, Jerry, I was th I was thinking of, thinking a lot about that. I'm thinking about Zeke and Dion and all that work that came into it. We should have got that win and. Uh, down the stretch, I said to Colin, I said, Colin, how did we lose against Richmond the last time? You know, I was like getting like the bad karma out of the way, uh, you know, saying that to him. Um, <laughs> or I said something to him like that when we beat Florida State uh, at Paradise Jam a couple years ago. Uh, I said something that to like reverse jinx it almost. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, it, it, it is the culmination, you know, think about where, where we've come to to get back. Uh, they're even better than they were at that point, but to come back to that build to this building and, and do this and get this wins, pretty awesome. Uh, John, go ahead. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry, I'm good. Apologize. You're good. Yeah. Does anybody else have any questions? All right. Thank you so much, Mike. Safe travels home and congratulations on the win. Thank you, guys. Happy holidays to everybody.